when the war broke out, I had happened to spend the night in Fallon. And when we left Fallon, we didn't know that there had been a war until we started driving home. It wasn't a very happy <laughs> occurrence. We, we, uh, we didn't really know what to think, I don't believe. Once World War II happened and uh, they were hiring here at the base, but people came from all over to work out here. It was a very, very big production. Two supply ammunition, they loaded it here, put it together and made all the weapons that were being sent. And they filled shells and rockets and depth charges. And it was one of the main points for shipping ammunition. My dad was a farmer and uh, he had read an advertisement in the paper about the ammunition depot needing, uh, needing workers and um, they signed him up right now. And, uh, but there was no place even to stay for the night. They had to sleep in the car. At that time they were sleeping, if they found an old car parked someplace they were sleeping in it. They'd get a couple cardboard boxes and a couple boards and nail them together and make a shack and stay. Uh, there was no housing here for them. People was coming in here so fast they couldn't they couldn't afford the houses. They, they just did. Sometimes it was three families living in a house. There were people coming and going all the time. There was employment, all the employment you would want. There was people walking up and down the street. You would have thought you were in a a city, big city. And I think about that time there were about 10,000 people here. And in one square mile, 10,000 people is a lot of people. And they were trying to build Babbitt. They had the contractors in here. They were building Babbitt, but it was all so fast and furious. That's what it was. The whole time was fast and furious. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Babbitt was built after we came. Mm -hmm. My dad had come to work in February of 42, but there was no place to live, so we had to wait till a house was ready in Babbitt. And so we came, the streets were kind of sand dune The uh, we didn't have any doorknobs. They had spools for to open the door, and, uh, but they were so anxious to get people in that we moved in and, uh, and they finished afterwards. <laughs> And so when Babbitt was built, the government housing project, I rented a unit there and lived there at Babbitt, which really helped a lot. And they were very comfortable, nice little places. And this was the best job, best houses, first bathroom I ever had in the inside. The fact that we had a, a new house with an inside bathroom uh, was, uh, was really quite a, an exciting event. And, my little sister, of course, had, had voted that she got to be the first one to use a bathtub. Babbitt used to be a beautiful place. It was really beautiful. After people planted grass and made lawns, and everybody kept their lawns up, and it, it was really beautiful. And, and, and we had, I had a nice childhood growing up here, really. And I really didn't know. I was, what, 10, no, I was nine years old when I came here. So I didn't really know anything about it being segregated because we went to school together. So actually it didn't dawn on me until after I was grown up. But that's true, it, it was like that. Uh, probably the worst would be eating in restaurants and things, I can, I can remember the problems there. We'd go on the basketball bus, or the school bus, to the basketball games out of town. And uh, we'd go to eat after the ball game was over, and if the cafe wouldn't serve the black members of the team, we'd all leave. It, it wasn't right. I was born under that segregation in Louisiana and back in the South. I was born under that, so I know how to handle it. So when, you, when you're born into something, you know, you're raised up in it, you've always been taught how to handle it. 
my dad and them always taught me. They, they never had no, no, uh, n nothing against the, the white man or anything. And I never will forget what he told me. My daddy told me. He said, now listen, I was coming up. He said, a man is no better than his wood. If you don't have a wood, you ain't no man. You can't, you, you got a wood, you got, use a man. But if you don't have a wood, then you ain't no man. And he always told me, he said, listen, it takes many letters to be a spell black man as it do white man. I lived on this side of the street. So here, I would say along about here, this would be a sidewalk here. Possibly this would be, this would, might have been the foundation right here. And I remember one time I came from school and I went into a back door and it wasn't my house. It was another person's house. So when I got in, I saw a lot of kids and I thought, what are you kids doing in here? And I thought, finally, I realized it wasn't my house because it was so, all the houses were so much alike. <laughs> So Billy, <laughs> and you know, young girl right out of high school, <laughs> lots of sailors and marines, and and they were very good about having dances and programs and for the service people, and we always had a good time, even though it certainly did make it hard to get up and go to work the next morning. <laughs> So as young girls, we were here every Wednesday night and every Saturday night to dance because they had a wonderful Navy band always. It was the era of the big band music and we were all dancers. <laughs> the place was packed. There was 17 sailors in that band. Yep, they, were, they, were. they had a hostess and an assistant hostess and she's the one that led the way. So we were kind of in on the ground floor of the junior hostesses and we were, we were scheduled to to work certain hours at the soda fountain. Worked on the weekend, came to the USO on Wednesday and Saturday night, had lots of friends. We just, this was a wonderful place to live during those years. Just a nice place for those young men to come and have a good time. Wednesday night was dance night. Yeah. <laughs> I still can see all those band members up there on that stage and that music. And I love the first thing was the fireplace and I miss that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I always thought they had the most beautiful furniture in here and the floors were so shiny you could almost see yourself. It was a beautiful place. This place was jumping all the time. And there wasn't a, it was packed in here, packed. Yep. It was packed, always. Yep. It was wonderful. Throw it across place. the floor, you might, uh, you might end up in somebody else's arms. Right. <laughs> and I hear him singing, Caledonia, Caledonia. <laughs> you bet. Caledonia, Caledonia, what makes it big and so hard? Ah! And I went with the sax, one of the saxophone players, so uh, we had a, that was a, just an ideal situation because uh, your boyfriend was right there, but you could dance with everybody else, and he couldn't get jealous because he was watching. <laughs> it was all jitterbug. All the sailors jitterbugged, all the girls. I mean, that was our dance. That was our time. <laughs> and the music was wonderful. <laughs> and the big band, the, the Navy band was wonderful. But it was just that good music. You know? The Blue Jackets, wasn't that their name? Yeah. Blue Jackets. Chairs along the side, nobody sat down, everybody dancing, dancing, dancing. And it was just a happy time. <laughs>